Sir, it's too much work since morning and I'm really running short of my patience. Why why can't we go for lunch now? Is it okay? Okay sir, okay. I have a call, but let's go. Sure, sure, sure. Even I can go, I'm feeling hungry. Joshin sir, uh, sir, I think the food must be cold by now. So No problem buddy, we have technology with us, we have microwave ovens with us. Go and let's microwave the food and yes. enjoy it. Okay, that's good, that's good. Sir, I've always wondered how this microwave works and since you are from electronics, can you please tell me? Sure, why not? But, do you really know the discovery of this microwave oven is a big coincidence? Is it? Can you please elaborate? Come on, I'll explain you. So, this is the magnetron, the main component of the microwave oven, you can say, which is responsible for producing the microwaves. And yes, it launches the microwave into the microwave cavity with this, with the help of this waveguide connected here. In 1945, Dr. Percy Spencer, then the employee of the company Raytheon was performing set of experiments on this magnetron wherein he found, once he found that the rays, the radiation emitted by this magnetron melted a candy bar, a chocolate kept in his pocket. This was surprising for him. But then he thought whether this rays, whether this radiation can actually cook the food. The first intentionally tried food was popcorn. Yes, he took some popcorn seeds placed nearby to the magnetron radiation and they popped up. Yes, the popcorn was cooked. Next, he tied with eggs and then he got the idea ki, can we make it as a commercial and a resi residential model. He started working on the project that how to actually convert it into a usable model. In 1947, Radar Range, the first commercial microwave oven which weighs around 340 kgs and 1.8 meter tall was invented. Somewhere in 1916, the microwave ovens for residential use also started developing. Now, there are several points to note which I'm going to address in this particular video. Yes, the radiation emitted by the magnetron has to be reused several times and they have to be trapped within the resonance cavity, that is the microwave cavity, how it is achieved. What is the concept of standing waves and what is this resonance cavity, how it is achieved? What are the different components of the microwave oven other than this magnetron? Let's see those also. Now, why only microwaves? Can we use any other electromagnetic waves or short of shorter frequency for the same purpose for the heating of the food or the cooking of the food? Let's find an answer to that also. And also the electromagnetic radiation which is emitted inside the microwave. Is it harmful to the human body, the humans which are standing outside the body, is it hazardous to the human health? If not, how it is prevented? Let's find the answer of all of this in this interesting video. Stay tuned with me till the end of the video. So this is basically the magnetron connected uh, in this microwave oven and this magnetron needs a very high supply voltage of somewhere around three to 4,000 volts and hence we use a step up high voltage transformer to provide the supply to this magnetron and when I take you towards the internal, this is the supply point. The magnetron that we have seen earlier, yes, this wave guide and antenna is going to emit the electromagnetic energy inside this cavity. Now to know more about this cavity, why this is stainless steel, why we need conductors, let's come and learn some concepts on the smart board. The electromagnetic waves have both the electric and magnetic field oscillating in directions perpendicular to the direction of propagation of waves. So here we have a wave propagating in the z direction, electric field oscillating along the x axis and magnetic field oscillating along the y axis. Now, most of the food that you consume has water molecules. The water molecules which are polar in nature. When those water molecules come in contact with the oscillating electric field, they tend to rotate. They tend to oscillate because of the torque developed. When several such water molecules oscillate at the same time, oscillate at the same time, they rub against each other, they interact, they rub against each other causing friction and the heat which is responsible basically for the heating of the food. So the magnetron basically produces the microwaves and we need to confine this microwave energy within the microwave cavity and also it has to be reused several times for to ensure the cooking of the food and heating of the food. To achieve this, first of all, a metal sheet, a conducting sheet has been placed on the other side, which is very commonly stainless steel in most of the microwave ovens these days. Yes, stainless steel because it is a good conductor. And what is one of the important property of the good conductor is that its intrinsic impedance 
is nearly tending to 0 because of which it offers the value of k reflection coefficient being minus 1 and transmission coefficient being 0 nearly this suggests that if the transmission coefficient is 0 there cannot be any transmitted energy within the conducting sheet and it only reflects the energy it totally reflects back the energy and you have a scenario something of this form of course guys these waves are going to be overlapping but just to give you a better visualization right now we have taken on different axis what we call this wave as basically the incident wave which falls on the conducting sheet and the conducting sheet basically reflects back the wave totally and this one is known as the reflected sheet but we need to reuse and reuse this microwave energy to ensure the cooking and heating of the food and that is why there will be one more metal sheet conducting sheet placed on the other side that is towards the so side something in this form but as soon as you play it um, place a metal sheet on the other side this metal sheet also reflects back the reflected energy once again i mean to say now this is like the incident energy for the second metal sheet and it again produces one more reflected wave yes we are going to see when this incident reflected energy combines what is the resultant wave we will see that with equations also but right now this is the scenario that is developing that means i can say there are multiple waves okay suffering multiple reflections at both the ends right at both the reflecting sheets there are multiple waves that can be propagating within the cavity to make it to make it look simple and to make it into an actual standing wave there has to be a smart design let's understand that okay so as you are able to see there will be multiple overlapping waves that can be traveling within the two conducting two parallel conducting sheets what is done is have a look into this picture what do you how do you actually see a reflected wave now let's suppose this is the incident wave stopped at a particular moment how do you draw a wave which is reflected corresponding to it so what you can do is guys just 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 for a moment forget that there isn't any reflection this wave has to propagate forward so if it were traveling forward what would be the shape just i'll continue its shape now the reflected wave is just the mirror image of this right side portion assuming that the metal sheet this is where the metal sheet is placed assuming that the metal sheet is acting as a mirror so now let me draw its mirror image and when i draw its mirror image just a moment when i draw its mirror image it is nearly going to be something like this okay now a smart and intelligent design suggests that where to place that second metal sheet which is towards the source source side have a look into this have a look into this particular diagram so if i place this particular if i pick this particular point which is a distance of lambda by 2 yes this distance the distance from the distance between repetition it is the wavelength of the wave so this is one entire wavelength so if i place the sheet at this particular distance guys see with this approximately if this is the distance lambda by 2 where i place the second sheet we know that the second sheet is going to create a reflected wave again and what is going to be that reflected wave it is going to be the reflected version of this blue wave of this dark blue wave right now guys try to create its reflection Again, I told you what is the method of reflection. The wave which is on the left side of the second sheet, take a mirror image. So when you take the mirror image, when you take guys, the mirror image of this portion, see very carefully with me. So when I take the mirror image of this particular portion, how it is going to appear on the other side, it is just going to overlap with the first incident wave. It is just going to overlap with the first incident wave. Okay, but lambda by 2 is a small distance. Let's move the second sheet more far away. Otherwise, the microwave ovens will be so compact, so compact that you cannot place uh, sufficient food inside it. Okay, so if I now try to keep this plate at a distance of lambda, perfect wavelength, the lambda which can be written as twice of lambda by 2. And once again, I see that if this is the second sheet, it is again going to create the reflection of this blue wave. Right now reflection method I have told you take the mirror image of this particular portion guys when you take the mirror image of this particular portion it is again going to be overlapping with this red wave which is the first incident wave. So this clearly and you can try this repeatedly this clearly gives a message that if you keep the second sheet at a distance of integral multiple of lambda by 2 at a distance of integral multiple of lambda by 2 you are going to actually visualize you are going to actually see only two waves the first incident wave and the first reflected wave rest the waves yes there is still multiple reflected waves but they are all overlapped with these two waves and eventually eventually guys you have a picture something of this kind
you have a picture which sees like there is only one incident wave that is reflected by this conducting sheet and there will be a second conducting sheet here which is going to reflect back again but you are going to visualize only two waves if you take this particular distance if you choose this particular distance as integral multiple of lambda by 2 now most of the microwave ovens guys you must know that it's a simple fact that they operate at a frequency of 2.45 gigahertz. They operate commonly at a frequency of 2.45 gigahertz approximately around this, right? The exact frequency, if you want see, there will be some deviations. If you really want to check how, what is the exact frequency a particular magnetron is emitting the wave, you can also use this distance. Right. With this distance, you can measure the distance of the cavity of your microwave oven. With that distance, you can see what is the value of lambda. And hence, of course, from lambda, you can calculate what is the C by, uh, what is the frequency. So, we all know that lambda is equal to C by F. And when you calculate this value, guys, this turns out to be, let's have a clear calculation in front of us. And when you calculate this, this turns out to be approximately 12 point. 12.25 centimeter right so the lambda by 2 is nearly nearly 6.12 centimeter 6.12 centimeter right the microwave oven i have at my home when i measured its length of the cavity yes it was somewhere around 32 it was somewhere around 32 centimeters or so. And when you take the integral multiple of this, the fifth integral multiple of this, yes, it's going to be 30.6. Small deviations will be there. Small deviations will be there. Small measurement errors can also be there. But yes, yes, the length is integral multiple of lambda by 2. Now, that is what I told you. If you want to exactly measure what frequency of wave magnetron is emitting, that may not be perfect 2.45. So, what you can go, you can go with the reverse phenomena. Measure this length n lambda by 2. Measure the length of n lambda by 2. Yeah, first measure the length of the cavity. Compare it with n lambda by 2. You get the lambda. That lambda will give you the frequency which is going to be within a small range of 2.45 gigahertz. Now moving forward, if there are two traveling wave, one in the forward direction, one in the backward direction, what is the resultant wave? Let's have a look into that. Okay, so this is what is a forward traveling wave where I have just assumed that this particular axis the right side, the forward axis is the z axis. So, we have a forward traveling wave in the z direction which is commonly written by the equation E naught cos omega t minus beta z where I am assuming that electric field is oriented, is oscillating in the x direction. Okay, as we have seen in the earlier picture as well. The reflected wave equation is uh, minus E naught cos omega t plus beta z minus E naught because the value of the reflection coefficient was equal to the minus 1 and the reflection coefficient basically we know that it is the ratio of the amplitude of reflected electric field to the incident electric field. Now, now when these two waves superimpose, when these two waves superimpose, what is the resultant wave? There is a small mathematics. We can add both the electric fields in the vector form and after adding calculations, you can do up to yourself. Let's focus on concept in this video. You get an equation of the form 2E0 sin omega t sin beta z. And when you sketch this, very interesting, when you sketch this for different values of time, right? Maybe t equal to 0, t equal to a, t equal to t by 4. We're taking small, small steps of time, you can try it up. It's a small mathematics. But when you sketch it for different values of time, you actually obtain a wave which is traveling neither to the right. Right traveling wave is given by omega t minus beta z, which is neither traveling to the left. Omega t plus beta z also you don't get. You get sine omega t, a separate function multiplied by sine beta z. So for different instants of time, you only get a function sine beta z, sine beta z with the amplitude just vary. The amplitude vary, will vary as given by the sine theta value. The sine theta may be starting from 0, maximum it can go to 1. You get a wave which is neither traveling right, which is neither traveling left. It is just oscillating at its own position as a function of z. As a function of z. And that is what is, you call it as a standing wave. That is what you actually call it as a standing wave. Right. By the superposition of these two, right, the incident, the reflected, we get this black wave, which is basically the standing wave, which is basically the standing wave, which looks something like this in the microwave cavity. This is what using the concept of resonant cavity, we confine the electromagnetic energy right, and make it look like a standing wave 
oscillating at its own position within the microwave. Let me tell you one or two more important and interesting property of the standing wave. As we know that the standing wave has been formed by the superposition of incident and reflected wave. Incident and reflected wave at some positions of time, they are in phase with each other and at some positions of time, they are totally out of phase with each other. Right? If I stop this picture, if I stop this picture at a particular moment, there may be a picture where the red and blue where the red and blue superimpose on each other and when they totally superimpose on each other, it's like 1 plus 1 equal to 2. They amplify the magnitude and you get, you get the standing wave which is having amplitude double of this one. The maximum amplitude will also be if this is E0 and E0, you get here E0 plus E0. But as the wave keeps on traveling, there will be moments when they are totally out of phase with each other. They are totally out of phase with each other. If it, this is plus E0, this is the minus E0. And the resultant of them, and the resultant of them will be 0. Okay, so some points will be superimposed perfectly and they get the maximum amplitude. Some points will totally cancel and they get the minimum amplitude that is the zero. And that is why when you have a standing wave, some points are oscillating to the extreme top. If you look into this, this is E0 to minus E0. This is what is traveling from E0 and when it travels, it travels back to minus E0. But there is this particular point which travels this much of amplitude. There is this point which travels more amplitude. But what about this point? This is a point which does not travel any amplitude. Does not travel any amplitude. So on a standing wave, on a standing wave, you have several nodes and you have several anti-nodes. Okay. These particular points which are not displaced at all, these are known as the nodes of the standing wave. These are known as what? These are all known as the nodes. Nodes in short, you can put it as the point of no displacement. Okay, of course the spelling of displacement is DIS, but just to make you understand this, what nodes are, we call it as no displacement, the points of no displacement. And on the other hand, these points, the points which are oscillating with the maximum amplitude, the points which are oscillating with the maximum amplitude, they are the opposite of nodes and hence they are known as the antinodes. Hence these are known as the antinodes. Hence these are known as what? These are known as the antinodes, even these one. At some point of time this will be plus E0, at some point of time this will be minus E0. So all these points which are traveling with the maximum amplitude, which are oscillating with the maximum amplitude, they are the antinodes. The distance between a node and anti-node, if you measure, the distance between a node and anti-node will be lambda by 4. The distance between any two nodes, okay, this is perfect one wavelength. So, distance between any two nodes is lambda by 2. Distance between any two anti-nodes, yeah, this is one. This is an anti-node. Distance between any two consecutive anti-nodes is also lambda by 2. Distance between any two consecutive nodes is lambda by 2. Now further, one problem identified by this method while uh, heating the food is that when you heat the feed by this standing wave, what do you see that there are several portions as I have marked here, there are several portions which do not get the sufficient microwave energy and when you take the food outside this microwave oven, you are going to see them as cold spots. Yes, there will be some hot spots which are heated properly, there are going to be some cold spots which are unheated, which are not heated properly, we call them as the cold spots. We refer to them as the cold spots. But there was a simple solution to this problem. As you might have noticed in all the microwaves that you use today, the plate that is attached at the base here is not a stationary plate that is actually rotating. It keeps on rotating so as to ensure that there are, there are no or minimum cold spots and it ensures uniform heating of the food. And that is why we have a rotating plate. Yes, a rotating plate inside the microwave oven. Now, there are two more important questions, important areas to be answered here. Yes, electromagnetic energy can heat food, microwave energy can heat food. But the question is, is it only the microwave range of frequency that can uh, heat the food or it could be even frequencies, even other electromagnetic frequencies, but of lower frequency range. So guys, what basically happened? Ki if you take a frequency which is lower, if you take waves of lower frequency, the lambda which is given by C by F correspondingly is larger. So what happens if you have a higher wavelength? There are two problems if you have a higher wavelength. Number one problem, if you have a higher wavelength, 
Corresponding to it, n lambda by 2. Now we have seen that the dimension of the resonant cavity should be nearly n lambda by 2. Higher the value of lambda, higher will be n lambda by 2 and you will get microwaves O1 which are bulky, which are more in size. Number 2 problem, if higher is the value of lambda, okay, if higher is the value of lambda, higher is the spacing, higher is the spacing between these two points and that is why you have uh, the possibility of getting more cold spots. If you have a lower value of lambda, which is ensured by taking a higher frequency. That is why we commonly go to the microwave range. If you take a microwave range frequency very high, the wavelength is small and because of the small wavelength, the dimension of the microwave is also relatively small and also, and also the wavelength, these points, okay, these nodes, because as I told you, what is the distance between antinodes? The distance between consecutive nodes or the distance between consecutive antinodes is also lambda by two. Lower the value of lambda, lower will be the distance between correspondingly two antinodes and you ensure uniform heating of the food. Second question that I'm trying to say that many people believe that standing near to microwave oven when it is functional may be uh, hazardous, right? Many people believe that uh, not to use microwave oven because it may be uh, harmful to the health. Let me tell you, the front of the microwave, the front of the microwave that you see commonly, you see it as a glass, you see inside what is the food getting heat, food getting cooked, something like this. But this glass, but this glass, it's, it's not only glass, but it is a sheet. Yes, a mesh type of, mesh type of conducting sheet, which is attached here so as to ensure. Now again, what happens if you uh, attach a conducting sheet here? What happens again if you attach a conducting sheet here? The conductor is going to reflect back the wave and all the electromagnetic energy is confined within the cavity. It does not propagate outside the cavity of the microwave oven. And that is why it is safe to be used. Yes, so eventually the concepts that you have studied now, you can relate that why we need the stainless steel because it's a good conductor. Why we need conductors on both the sides. One is on the opposite side. One is towards the source side. This is the second conducting sheet I was talking about. This is the rotating uh, plate. Why we need the rotating plate. We have described about this. This is the door, which also, which is uh, made up of glass, but it also in the inside contains a mesh type of conducting sheet so that the electromagnetic energy remains trapped inside the body. It does not uh, is not emitted outside and also uh, many of the food items say for example cake or pizzas they need to be crispy from outside and soft from inside that is why the latest microwave ones also come up with the functionality of convection heating yes look into these rods which are connected here and these uh, you know food items like cake they need to be heated more from outside for the crisp nature and they need to be soft from inside that is why convection heating system is also included in most of the microwave ovens that you have available recently although plain microwave ovens without convection heatings are also available in the market this is the uh, waveguide cover. Yes, we place the waveguide cover at this point. I just took out, uh, I have just taken it out actually. We place it at this point to ensure that the steam or the moisture from the food does not affect the waveguide functionality. Now, one more point here is what type of utensils you can use inside the microwave oven. You might have used glass or several plastics which are microwave safe. You never use steel, steel containers or steel utensils inside the microwave oven. The simple reason being uh, the glass and the plastics are dielectric materials, but steel on the other hand is a good conductor. When you place any food inside the steel, the tendency of steel or any metal body, you can't use any other metal as well, uh, like any aluminum containers or all, because the tendency of any metal container is to reflect back the energy. We have just learned they will reflect back the energy. They will not allow the energy to penetrate inside them and hence the food cannot be cooked. So yes guys in this video I have covered up the brief details of the microwave oven talking about its structure, talking about magnetron, talking about uh, the different components, how the electromagnetic energy is trapped within the microwave cavity, what is the standing waves and many of these concepts you also use in your gate preparation especially standing waves, the node, anti-node, there are questions based on this. So we just try to make such interesting videos for you so as to ensure that you get enough motivation to prepare for your gate examinations, the things that you actually study in the books how they are implemented in the real life and microwave oven is one such device okay which you use in a very common life also we have seen that how a small accident a melting chocolate has revolutionized this world by giving us the microwave oven so guys a small request from my side if you have enjoyed the video if you have liked the video if you found it interesting if you found it informative do not forget to mention your comments 
in the comment box since this is recording you are not interacting with me live so i need to see your comments so please your genuine comments will be truly appreciated and if you really like do not forget to like the session with this rakesh talreja signing off and if you want more such videos that's what your comments will tell us how much you're interested and if you really want more such videos and definitely there are live sessions also going on on the channel do not forget to subscribe the byju's exam prep gate and esc youtube english channel for more such videos and more such content bye bye thank you and stay safe